This program looks at how the beach became the place to take a vacation. The development of the Palm Beach area of Florida as the place to take the vacation and what's happening in the Palm Beach area these days. The Industrial Revolution got started in England during the second half of the 1700s. It was a major turning point in history and affected almost everything on our planet. The steam engine was invented. The world looks for better things for better living through chemistry. New chemicals were produced. The factory system became the primary way to make things. And those factories began making iron. Machine tools were developed. Locomotives began crisscrossing the countryside. Steamships started sailing the oceans. Information started moving around by telegraph. Within 50 years, the revolution started taking place throughout Western Europe and the United States. Suddenly, more people had more money than ever before. And they were living in cities and towns with more pollution than ever before. The wealthiest people wanted to take what was called a vacation, a word that previously meant an involuntary absence from work. And one of the most important places for a beach vacation became the Palm Beaches on the east coast of Florida. Now up until the 1750s, nobody really wanted to go to the beach. It's kind of a scary place. Pirates were there, invaders were there, kidnappers. It wasn't on your dance card. But then in the 1750s, three things came together to change the image of the beach. The first was a group of medical authorities who kept saying, you should go to the beach, breathe the fresh sea air, and bathe in the fresh sea water, and it would be good for your health. Romantic writers began describing the beach as the ideal place to encounter true nature, and painters began painting beach scenes. The perfect environment for escape and self-discovery. And people of wealth began viewing the beach as the ultimate luxury destination for a vacation. And one of the most popular places for a seaside vacation became Palm Beach on the east coast of Florida. Once upon a time, before people had heard much about renewable energy, Henry Flagler and his pal, John D. Rockefeller, founded the Standard Oil Company, which made them two of the wealthiest people in America and two of the busiest. In 1883, Henry decided to take a break and spend the winter in Florida. Not the kind of guy to just lie around on the beach. He envisioned the east coast of Florida as the American Riviera. So he built the East Coast Railway to bring people to Florida. Problem was that at some point you had to get off the train and find a place to stay. And there weren't any hotels that were up to the standard of the head of the Standard Oil Company. So he started building hotels. In Palm Beach, he built the Royal Ponciana Hotel on the Lake Worth Lagoon facing the inland waterway. On the same property, but closer to the beach, he built the Palm Beach Inn. Soon, people who were staying at the Royal Ponciana began asking for rooms near the beach, where the ocean waves were breaking on the shore. So in 1901, Flagler renamed the hotel the Breakers, and everyone lived happily ever after. Yay! Sea turtles have been swimming through the world's oceans for over 100 million years, but their ability to survive is being challenged, and the forces that are confronting the sea turtle are also threatening our own survival. Sea turtles are part of the beach and dune ecology system. When they nest, they leave behind unhatched eggs and hatchlings that don't survive. As they decay, they form the nutrients that allow the dunes and the beaches to exist. If the turtles go, then the beaches and the dunes go, and so does much of the land we live on. In 1969, Eleanor Fletcher and her husband Robert moved to Juneau Beach, Florida, and started a real estate business. Eleanor began to notice that during each spring and summer, 
thousands of turtles would nest on the nearby shore. And after hatching, many would head inland rather than back to the sea. A curiosity led to some of the earliest scientific research about turtles in Florida on what turned out to be one of the most important nesting beaches in the world. She realized that as more and more development took place closer and closer to the ocean, the sea turtle's environment was being challenged. She also discovered that the best way to protect the sea turtle was to educate young children about the problem. She began giving classes in her home, then in a room above her real estate office. These days, her work is carried on at the Loggerhead Marine Life Center of Juneau Beach. Each year, over 300,000 visitors come to see the exhibits and the sea turtles. So here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center, we are one of the few open sea turtle hospitals in the world. There's only about five of us. Some people might look at us as a sanctuary, but we're a fully functioning sea turtle hospital. So all of our patients that are here are here to be rehabilitated, and if we can get them healthy and well, released back into the ocean. We've been able to create some really groundbreaking therapies here, which have changed the way that the world treats these endangered animals. We've created a system that allows us to deliver nutrition at the molecular level to a critically endangered and critically ill sea turtle patient. And what's really great is we're using it now not only in sea turtles, but we've shared this methodology with other centers from around the world, and it's even being used in endangered and threatened penguins. So what you're looking at right here is our outdoor sea turtle hospital yard. And each of these tanks are our hospital tanks. And today, we're really lucky to be here with our sea turtle patient, Scallywag. Um, what's really neat about Scallywag, and he's gonna come up and see us right now, is he's a green sea turtle. You can see that he lost one of his front right flippers. He was actually, when he was a lot smaller, he was actually um, attacked by a shark. Now, that's normal, and that's part of the food chain behavior in the ocean, especially when turtles are very small. Um, but he was very significantly injured. He was in critical condition when he came into our hospital. This turtle is a great candidate for release, and they tend to do very well in the wild, even if they've only lost one flipper. But what we'll do when Scallywag's ready to be released is we will invite the public here in Juneau Beach, Florida to join us on the beach adjacent to our campus, and we will watch the turtle return to the ocean. Yeah. And what's nice about inviting our guests here is when they see the turtle who's been rehabilitated here in our hospital go back to the ocean, it, it really solidifies that statement that we like to say. The sea turtle tells us the health of the ocean, the ocean tells us the health of our planet. The kids, of course, connect with the little, sure. little turtles. They like them. And you can tell the story to the children about how the turtle progresses and how the threats to the turtle out in the wild progress and what we need to do to protect our little ones. What's really nice about our center is we're continuing this over three decade history of helping to educate not only our visitors, but the next generation. Essential. Hopefully we're gonna find the next Cousteau right here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. The Palm Beaches is also the home of the Professional Golf Association of America, better known as the PGA. It's located at the PGA National Resort and Spa in Palm Beach Gardens. They have five championship 18-hole courses, one of which includes the dreaded bear trap. The bear trap consists of three holes designed to strike fear and loathing into the heart of any golfer. It was named after Jack Nicklaus, whose nickname is the Golden Bear. Tell me about Bear Trap. Well, the Bear Trap is actually 15, 16, and 17 at the, on the Champion Golf Course at PGA. And um, it's three very, very difficult holes, a par three, a par four, and a par three. And what makes it difficult is, number one, water on the approach to every green, but also the prevailing winds that have a tendency to blow the balls into the water. That's a great help. 
So as I'm sure you understand, there's a lot of different shots in golf. Everything from the tee shot to the approach shot, to the fairway, um, fairway woods, bunker shots and whatnot. But quite honestly, you can shave the most shots off your game with a good putting stroke. Ah, That's where, know. you know, they say, drive for show, putt for dough. I can't, I can't make it up. So let's just see what you can do here. Ooh. Too much power. A little okay. strong, a little strong. All right, let me work on this. Let's, I've never done this before. Let's see if we so. can get the comebacker in. You know, I, I've played a lot of billiards. Have you? Well, it's similar. It's all about Good. lining it up. Okay, I'm lining it up. Oh, I think you have played some billiards. Yes, I have. My advice to you? Yeah. Take two weeks off and then quit. <laughs> you talked me into it. And as you would expect, the bar at the resort makes a perfect Arnold Palmer, which consists of three parts iced tea to one part lemonade. And you know, if you get trapped in the beer trap under the PGA rules, you are allowed to take a shot of bourbon and put it on top of your own armor. Wow. Okay. It was worth getting trapped. It's really quite a beautiful place. I mean, just for, to be here, whether you're playing golf or drinking. <laughs> it, it really is. And there's some tremendous uh, venues on the property, you know, whether it's at sunrise or sunset, that quite honestly, they rival anything in the world from a beauty perspective. It's, uh, it's tough coming to work every day, you know? <laughs>
Many of the older buildings in the Palm Beaches are in a style known as Mediterranean Revival or Spanish Colonial Revival. And the architect most responsible for the rebirth of those forms was Addison Meisner. These days, his memory is also honored in downtown Boca Raton with the Meisner Park Center. There's the Center for the Arts, which includes the Boca Raton Museum of Art, the Art Fix Gallery, which is home to over 600 artists. There are places to eat and places to shop. I've gone down a street, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the devil kept following me, and he kept telling me how good I look. <laughs> That devil came up behind me and said, He said, uh, see, Mama, look at the dress in the window. He <laughs> said, that's your size, too. The devil just shoved me in that door. And he pushed me in the door. The devil pulled a gun and he threatened me and made me sign your name to a check. <laughs> Historically, groups of people came together in order to ensure their survival. Food, water, and shelter were at the top of the list. Once those were reliably available, everyone could turn to more artistic endeavors. Sculpture, painting, music, architecture, a little literature, and some public television. Just the basics. Eddie Catini was a member of the Swiss curling team and was kind enough to teach me some of the finer points. And of course, Palm Beach was no exception. By 1936, there was a general consensus that the area needed more culture, and so the Society of the Four Arts was formed. They have a series of unusual botanical gardens. New arrivals to South Florida were struggling with gardening in the state's tropical climate. In 1938, seven demonstration gardens were set up to illustrate different types of landscaping and information on drought and heat-tolerant plants. Next to the botanical garden is a sculpture garden. Winston Churchill and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I have quotes from both of these guys that I really like. From Winston, he had a terrible relationship with Lady Astor. And one day she said to him, Winston, if you were my husband, I would put poison in your coffee. And Winston said, if I were your husband, I'd drink it. Sounds like Groucho. And from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, when you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. There's a general library for adults and a library for children and adults who behave like children. An art gallery designed by Addison Meisner with changing exhibitions. The building has a 700-seat auditorium with a state-of-the-art sound system where they present live broadcasts of the National Theater of London, the Bolshoi Ballet, and the Metropolitan Opera. This is the Atlantic Avenue shopping district in downtown Delray Beach. Shops, restaurants, and a nice place to take a walk. Every year, the local firefighters put on a huge St. Patrick's Day parade. ends at the Old School Square, which is a five-acre site in the middle of the shopping district. It's home to an art gallery that presents the work of international artists, a museum shop that presents the work of local artists. Next door is the Crest Theater, which is in the restored Delray Beach High School that dates back to the 1920s. This is the Crest Theater, which only has 323 seats, which can give it a great sense of intimacy. 
Not always. They offer Broadway shows and stand-up comedy in cooperation with Catch a Rising Star. Uh, the other day I was making uh, red plane reservations and I had to uh, enter my birth date and year and I'm scrolling and I'm like, this is taking like, 20 minutes to get to my birth year, okay? If you are interested in serious horsing around, the place to visit is the Palm Beach International Equestrian Center. Horses have been around for about 55,000 years. About 6,000 years ago, someone decided that we could work together, which turned out to be a great idea. The first horses to be brought to the United States were brought by Spanish colonists who set up our earliest cattle ranches. Horses have some very interesting traits. They have a highly developed sense of fight or flight, which was key to their survival in the wild. They have an outstanding sense of balance and amazingly can sleep while they are standing as well as when they are lying down. Being able to sleep while you're standing is a particularly valuable skill. I learned it many years ago and it allowed me to sleep to major portions of my family gatherings. These days, the horse is celebrated at the Palm Beach International Equestrian Center, which is considered to be the premier equestrian sporting venue in the world. Over 8,000 acres totally devoted to horsing around. The surface of the competition areas, known as the footing, has been upgraded to Olympic quality. I hear they are considering a series of internet sensors which would prevent the Russian hackers from influencing the horses. Yes, comrade. The 12 competition rings are part of the equestrian show complex used to demonstrate skills in various categories like jumping, hunter, dressage, driving, polo, and western trail riding. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on your lips Happy trails to you Until we meet again Now well, to look at the history of the seaside vacation and what's happening in the Palm Beaches. I hope you will join us next time as we travel around the world trying to figure out what is going on and why. For Travels and Traditions, I'm Bert Wolf. Ah, uh, but wait, there's more. Whenever we edit one of our programs, we always end up with more good material than we can fit in. Interviews, stories, recipes. So we decided to put them on our website, BertWolf.com.